Question 28, E and F are independent events. And we have a sample space here, or an outcome space. Assume that all elements are likely, equally likely, the value of K. Okay, so they're independent, so the probability of E, which is six over the total, but the probability of F, which is three plus K over the total, has to be equal to three, the probability of the intersection over the total. So what's the total here? We have three and three is six, plus two is eight, plus K. So there's eight plus K for everyone. Eight plus K is the denominator. So to simplify this, multiply across by eight plus K. And that will get rid of one of them, and it will get rid of that one, both sides by a plus k. So that's going to leave 6 times 3 plus k over 8 plus k is equal to 3. 18 plus 6k is equal to 24 plus 3k. Bringing the 3k to the left, we'll end up with 3k is equal to 24 minus 18, which is 6. So k is equal to two let's just check that six over eight plus two which is ten times three plus k which is five over eight plus k which is ten is that equal to the intersection which is three over ten and you can see here that five goes into ten twice and two goes into six three times so three over ten is equal to three over ten so they are independent and we want the probability of E complement, F complement. When we've investigated that they're independent, it told us that. And investigative E complement and F complement are independent. Okay, so we need E complement. Everything outside of E is going to be this and this. So everything outside of E, just move this a little bit. Probability of E complement is equal to K, which is 2 and 2. So we're going to have four over the total which was 10 the probability of f complement is going to be the three and the three the two no just the three and the two sorry the three and the two so five over ten and the probability of f p e complement intersection f complement so where does everything outside e intersect with everything outside f well let's have a look So if I just highlight those, everything outside of A in black. And then I'll do everything outside F in red. And you can see the only place where there's black and red is in fact at the two. So that's the intersection of the complements. So that's gonna give me I'll keep it in red. The probability of E complement intersection F complement was 2. So that's 2 over 10. And we're asked to investigate if these are also independent. So the probability of E complement by the probability of F complement would have to be equal to the probability of E complement complement n e to the power of n e complement intersection f complement we have all the values here so let's fill them in 4 over 10 by 5 over 10 is that equal to 2 over 10 so 5 goes into 10 twice and 2 goes into 4 twice you can see here that 2 over 10 is equal to 2 over 10 therefore independence Okay, we go back and look at 29. A simple fair sided dice. Fair six sided dice is rolled twice. E, two appears on the first row. F, the total on the two rolls is an even number. And G, the total on the two dice is less than five. Investigate if E and F are independent and E and G are independent. So, two different parts to this question.
Okay, we could draw out the boxes, but we may not need to. Two appears on the first row, so the probability of E is just one over six. Two appears on the first row, you're rolling the dice. F, the total on the two rows is an even. Well, there's 18 even and 18 odd, so 18 over 36 is the odds of them being even, and 18 over 36 is the odds of being odd, and the total on the two dice is less than five less than five so it can either be four three or two and you guys remember this pattern two is one over 36 three is two over 36 and four is three over 36 there's a pattern so that's six the total there is six over 36 so i'll go one over six here and one over two here okay it are e and f independent okay so how many of the even rows Pretty much your assets here. How many of the even rows has two on the first dice? So we have rolled two dice. There's a two on the first dice. How many of them appear even? Well, it would have to be with an even number the second time, which there's three of. So it's going to be three. There's going to be three um, of these for E inter intersection F. Just the two rows are even. Two is on the first dice. So it could be two and a two, a two and a four, or a two and a six. So we're going to say. The probability of E intersection F is 3 over 36, which is 1 over 12. So now we have the probability of E is that times the probability of F equal to the probability of E intersection F. So E is 1 over 6. F is 1 over 2. Is that equal to 1 over 12? You can see in this case again, 1 over 12 is equal to 1 over 12. They can ask are they independent and it doesn't work out to be, but it's only come up once. So yes, independent. I'll just put a big I for independent. And are E and G independent? Okay, G, the total on the two dice is less than five. So we need to know how many of these six have a two on them. So let's see, in this one here, how many of these, well, okay. To roll a two, it has to be a one on the first dice followed by a one. So that definitely doesn't have a two on the first dice. To roll a three, it could be a two and a one, or a one and a two, so this one has a two on the first dice. And to roll a four, it can either be a two on the first dice followed by a two on the second dice. That's the only way, isn't it? It can't be anything else. So of that six, only two of them have a two on the first dice. So the probability of E intersection G, there's going to be two of them. So two over 36, which we could simplify to one over 18. So is the probability of E by the probability of G equal to the probability of E intersection G? What's the probability of E? One over six, one over six by again we have 1 over 6 is that equal to 1 over 18 and in this case you can see 1 over 36 is not equal to 1 over 18 so therefore not independent with a big I and just one more number 30 E and F are independent event, independent events it's a bit of a tongue twister E is 2 over 5 2 over 5, and the probability of E union F is 3 over 5. The probability of E union F is 3 over 5, and the union should just be a, a U shape without the squiggle. Okay, and what are we asked here? We're asked to find the probability of F, and we're told that they're independent. So we're looking for the probability of F. Okay, so it doesn't look like we can start this one with E and F. Thanks, sir. So we may need to look at something else here. Let's look at the probability of E union F and see where that gets us. E union F is the probability of E plus the probability of F minus the intersection. Does this help us here? Let's just see. We know they're independent. So 
we can definitely come up with something here. We can change maybe E union F into something. So that's three over five is equal to two over five. Plus all of this has to be one over five. The probability of F, which we don't know. Minus the probability of the intersection. Now the intersection, because they're independent, is E times F. So maybe we could actually write that. We have the probability of E. So this is the probability of E by the probability of F. So let's probability of E, probability of F. Okay, I just have, I have the probability of E is two over five. So I just have one unknown here. So I'm gonna let the probability of F equal X. Therefore, three over five is equal to two over three plus X minus two over five times X. Does that make sense? Okay, so let's change them to 15. Well, let's just simplify three over five minus two over three is equal to three X over five, three fifths. We're taking a full X, and we're taking away two fifths of it. So if I multiply everything by 15, I'm gonna get 15 by three, 45 over five, nine minus 30 over three, which is 10 is equal to, is this gonna work out for me? Three fifths X, so it's gonna be nine X. I think there's something down wrong there. Let's just check the information in the question. Two over five, three over five. What did I write? Two over five, three over five. I wrote two over three in here. Okay, so the probability of V is two over five. Yes, yeah, so I have a, well, where did I write it wrong? This one here, two over three should be two over five. Okay, so let me just write that down. Then we're gonna get, I just need to multiply everything by five. We're just cancel the denom denominators here. So that's gonna get three minus two is three X. If you make a mistake, you should be able to see it. If it doesn't work out at the end, go back and check what you've done. One is equal to three X. So X is equal to a third in this case. And what were we asked to find? Probability of F, which we let equal X, didn't we? So probability of F is equal to a third. Be careful transcribing from one line to the next.